Good morning and thanks for joining us this morning on Off the Press, the program where we dissect the national dailies and try to understand it, make sense of it uh, to the best uh, that we can. And with me to do that this morning is Dr. Idu Adeguke. Good morning. Welcome. And of course, Ifi Oji also. Oh, Dr. Edu is a public affairs analyst, and Ifi is a legal practitioner and also a public affairs analyst. So it's good to have you both this morning uh, to look at the headlines. They seem to be crying, shouting, so many of it. So we have the punch, we have the vanguard, we have uh, this day and the nation newspaper up for review this morning. But we shall begin with the punch newspaper. It will be displayed uh, shortly. And the first story there, it's... Um, Federal Executive Council approves 5.4 billion naira for gas parks and airport security. Already displayed on your screen there, and that story is on page 20, 29 of the Punch newspaper. Now, fraudsters using my office to defraud Nigerians. That's according to the S uh, Secretary uh, to the Government of the Federation. That's serious, Mustafa, on page 13. And Buhari slashes ministers' foreign trips and Esther codes on page 13. Aisha Buhari apologizes for viral uh, villa rage, and that's on page nine. Federal government deports seven Koreans, bans them for life. That's on page nine. Lawan Christian lawmakers pray for Nigeria uh, October 31st, and that's on page 14. Now, experts oppose, no, 25.7 trillion uh, Naira debt. Experts oppose IMF's call for tax hike. Says, Niger, say Nigerians overtaxed already. And that's on page 29. Increasing tax will help federal government to offset debts, execute, execute projects, according to Fund. Or LCCI done others advise government to widen tax net. And now we have the very sad picture story of... Um, the tanker explosion from Onicha yesterday and says woman, child and three others burnt in the Onicha tanker fire. And that's on page 24. UI sets up panel to expose Randy lecturers. And that's on page 45 of the Punch newspaper. Traders snub, snub dark directive continues sniper sale. That's on page 14. And the FCC seals off Oshun nightclub over 94 suspected fraudsters. That story also is on page 45. And Lagos makes a U-turn, says killer cops will be prosecuted. Good. That's on page, pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. Now, Unizik sacks embattled lecturer, withdraws PhD after Punch reports. That is serious, and it's on pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. Federal government allocates 169.88 billion naira for roads in 2020. The story is on page two. And on the back page uh, of the Punch newspaper, there's a column there uh, by Abimbola Adelakum. Are there elders in Buhari's household? Good question. We will come to that. I will ask you to even grab a copy of it and find out. So where do we begin this morning? We come to the front page. Uh, so many stories calling our attention. Shall we begin yeah. with you? OK, Dr. well. Adel. I would like to start from the expert opposing the IMF's call for tax mm -hmm. uh, hike. Yeah, you can understand from what the, where, the, where the experts are coming from mm -hmm. on the social perspective. An average Nigerian have not even gotten any benefit of the tax we've been paying, and you're saying we should go. But on the, on, on the other edge of the sword, you need to understand where IMF is coming from, which we've said before on this forum, that our revenue is not commensurate to our spending or our need. So, but the, the main thing is, like the LCCI has, has reasonably advised, the government needs to capture mm -hmm. more people in the tax net. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday, the Labor Congress uh, in Lagos, were meeting with Lagos State Governor. Yeah, they and they were saying they're ready to help the state government to widen the tax net by bringing in the informal sector I'm an apostle of government trying to encourage the informal sector. Mm -hmm. And there's so much being lost to that sector because nobody cares about them. If I may add to what the uh, doctor has just said, I'm, yeah. I, I also agree with him. We definitely have to bank the unbanked. So this is basically the traders that, that carry a large volume of cash and have high volumes of trade on a daily basis. Mm. Um, I don't necessarily, I think there are also two uh, sides to this story. IMF is coming from a point where obviously we have, uh, they're, they're trying to recover revenues 
based on um, their um, association with other uh, developed countries who have obviously made investments over the years in Nigeria. So they're looking at, uh, I guess everyone, even, for, even within our local uh, um, debt so, pool, yeah. are looking at ways of actually sort of t t reducing our debt profile. Mm. And um, I think from their own, ex from their own uh, perspective, when they look and they do a comparative analysis across Africa, other countries such as Ghana are in double digits for certain taxi taxes. And uh, I think we also, I, I think the point that uh, Dr. Ray is about uh, widening the net is very important because mm -hmm. it will obviously capture the, the formerly unbanked once they are banked, and at that same point as well, we're able to actually capture and um, yeah, yeah, rec rec recover our debt. Okay, now. Uh Move on to other stories now. Um, fraud says he's in my office to defraud Nigerians. Buhari slashes foreign trips and Esther could. Ify. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? She, I know you're smiling at me because this is a very, this is one of my favorite yes. topics. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say that I don't think it's a good uh, step from the, from the federal government. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very positive step. Mm -hmm. Not because I don't think that some of these trips are warranted, especially as we're having our drive to increase and to rev up uh, foreign direct investment. I know we're down to almost 50% of what we had from the previous year, 2017 to 2018. Mm. But when you look at rec um, recurrent expenditure, especially based on uh, what was presented as our budget for 2020, yeah, yeah on, on, on the floor of the National Assembly, it begins to make you question certain things. So if you're looking, if you're looking at recurrent expenditure and the highest item on that list of recurrent expenditure is your staff needs. Mm. That is where the problem is. And I think, it, it, I mean, anyone that had seen that list from a strategic point of view would use that, would look at that item first and try and slash it. I think they were at up to two billion. Mm. And that's basically at par with what we used to service our debt uh, the same year that the, the expenditure was incurred. So, I mean, and, and, and let's, let's actually also put this in perspective. They're not saying that they're not going to uh, look at legitimate uh, travel Travels. requirements. They're looking at, okay, saying, okay, within certain chairmen of, FD, of MDAs, they, they need, only want to travel within like a um, um, maybe twice a quarter, mm -hmm. and that you should actually plan in advance. They're encouraging, they're encouraging them to plan in advance, roll out their calendar over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, so that, you know where you're, you know where you're going mm -hmm. to. It even helps them uh, you know, in, in turn to even plan within their departments, their parastatals, even their, um, the, the ministries. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. I know it may, they may, it may bite a bit because some people Especially are expecting Especially those to, who will not be going. They've reduced some people to who join the ministers in the trip. So if, for instance, uh, someone is a beneficiary, this won't be good news. Yes, but at the same time, we have to look at it from, um, from a larger perspective always, sure. you know. The higher what, good. Yes, the higher good, the greater good of our country. And at the same time, I mean, in looking in, com in, compar in comparison to other countries as well, more developed countries. I mean, I know I talk about um, you know, the um, trips outside Nigeria, but it, it exposes you and it opens your eyes to what other countries are doing. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have uh, the, you know, the, the so-called uh, entourage that we that are very famous for in Nigeria. We are not what you find in other countries, even richer countries, even in China. Mm. China is a big, the biggest creditor of the entire world. And the entourage is nowhere near what we in Nigeria are used to um, carrying around. Right. Well, let me quickly add. Okay, do. Well, that news made the rounds yesterday evening and people were celebrating. <laughs> Personally, I don't know what Nigerians are celebrating. Because it's finally, well, they no, got no, no. them. It's a good news, mm -hmm. but we shouldn't celebrate. It should they be should have done it from... Yeah, no, even they should have done it. From, I want Mr. President to make it across board. Okay. There are too many uh, aides following ministers, governors, even local governments. Mm. People doing nothing, getting paid on the public uh, fund. So what they, we cannot be doing uh, be showman all the time. We need a policy. I've said it here before. We need a total restructuring for our civil service and for our political structure. It needs to be across, but it needs to come up. This is this is one of the changes. If this administration goes after first year, after four years, and the only change they can make is to revamp and change this structure that has started with the ministers alone, but it should go across board. board. Now APC has a larger number in the Federal National Assembly. Mm -hmm. They can put this to paper. They're in a very privileged position. So yes, to speak. we need this done. Mm. All right. Uh, I know there are so many stories here, uh, but we'll have to move to 
to we have to move to the vanguard and uh, it says federal government cuts travels Esther quotes for ministers and other officials that's the big story there MDS to submit get approval for travel plans directive to ensure efficiency curb leakages in government resources size of delegations now limited more officials to travel economy that's on page five mm -hmm. uh, the Onicha fire, uh, the sad story from yesterday. Uh, we can see picture story of that, of the tanker from yesterday that uh, fell and tipped somewhere in I Iweka Street. And then Jim Ovia School acquires AIS property in Lagos. That's on page 10. Why federal government can't recover $62 billion uh, from oil majors. That's according to Silver. And xenophobia, another Nigerian killed in South Africa, no, two weeks after Buhari Ramaphosa's meeting. Uh, that story is on page six. Uh, and then why 13.1 million children are malnourished in Nigeria? This is according to UNICEF. Now we'll go to the top. We'll see where 45 billion Naira bus purchase. We acted on Ambody's ESCO's approval, says Accountant General. That's on page 10. It's already displayed there. You can see it on your screen. IMF worries over Nigeria's debt burden. Insurgency. On page 46, sorry. Insurgency. Buhari directs service chiefs to settle entitlements of slain soldiers. And that's on page 8. Um, well, there's something on e-daily there for you. My husband gets angry when I try to cook. Uh, Regina Daniels. That's on page 17. A bit of entertainment there. So well, let's go to... Um, do you think about Ambodis? Yes. Okay, yeah. I was waiting for you. <laughs> I knew that you'd come to it even before. I... <laughs> so, yes, let's hit the ground running, Ambodi. Well, it's good that um, the Accountant General, mm. uh, I don't know whether he's present or former. It, what, during is, his time. Yeah, during Ambodi's time, he's mm. talking now. Yeah, I guess that was our own meeting with the State House of Assembly. Yes, yes, yes. You know, the, commissioner, the former Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget had come, I think, a few days before, mm. and indicted the governor. But she's coming now saying different things because mm. is, this is now telling us that even the commissioner who's come to indict somebody is an accomplice. If mm. she's saying the ESCOs approved, even though the money was not appropriated for from the information that is in, is, is in the head, mm. you shouldn't spend any money that is not appropriated for. But she's now saying There's it was approval. approved by the ESCO, not only Ambody, and by what I know, the commissioners are part of the ESCO. Mm -hmm. So I hope we can get this to a log logical conclusion mm, that it doesn't just get under the carpet. We hope so. See where all of this is headed. If we may if go you know. to, um, yeah, I agree with him, but if we may go to um, the IMF, sure. for the World Bank meetings again, I mean, mm. we had this topical just because they're going on as we speak, mm. you know, and uh, again, Nigeria, we, we really need to change the narrative on where Nigeria is heading, especially in terms of our economic growth in the next five years. Mm. And um, they've also looked at our debt again. I know mm. we, they tried, to, I think, I, I, would, I, I would imagine that the statement that was made in regarding the increase of taxation in Nigeria is a, a direct uh, um, solution in their own eyes to mm. this, to our increasing debt. And uh, I, I mean, there was a, there was a, a, a famous, uh, there was a famous article, I mean, I think over the weekend that really talked, talked about this in, in, in detail, mm. leading up to the uh, IMF uh, World Bank meetings. And they basically tried to define in such a way that the infrastructure and the big ticket items in Nigeria need to be moved completely out of government, the purview of the government, mm. and into uh, the banks and the private yeah, investors, sectors. per sector, yeah. exactly. And that government typically should focus on welfare matters and projects that are welfare related. Those are the schools, mm -hmm. health, edge, you know, and education and, and, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So and, and it makes perfect sense because we all know that in the right hands, the infrastructure is the money that is spent on infrastructure is recoverable. Mm -hmm. It's recoverable. I mean there's no way and in fact even if we even if from a collateral uh, even if it was collateralized within the uh, assets, government will still um, win in that kind of um, scenario. So the, the, the point I'm, I'm trying to make really is that moving forward, if one of the ways we can really reduce this debt, as, as according to what I think Ms. Patilo from uh, the IMF, uh, IMF says, is that we need to really, really look at and really, really try and make a push for private sector involvement in infrastructure in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and then le and ho let government focus, focus squarely on, on the welfare mm -hmm. of Nigeria as a welfare state. Mm. All right, well, let's talk about this Onicha fear fire. Yes. This is really tragic yesterday. Yeah. And um, I, I just tend to wonder, some of these 
heavy trucks we see on our road and they, they are not even roadworthy. How do they get there? And every time we see this kind of things happening, not just you know, nature alone, you know, we see it every, even in Lagos before we came on yeah. air, you were saying something. Well, quickly, we, we will not blame only the government, like yeah. I said. Before it's we contributory. Came on air. The people contribute because it is saying that the people deserve the kind of government they get. Sadly. Now, is a Nigerian or non-Nigerian that owns that truck. Mm. It's not in good condition. You put it on the road, carrying thousands of liters of uh, petrol. My now, the trailer falls, strip and fall on the road. And now, gold in flames. And now, killing innocent people. Yeah, a lot, I mean, there's a lot of there were, casualties. There were, there were the pictures. I was listening to the news yesterday. Mm. There were police stations near the incident and they caught fire. Oh, gosh. The shops, people ran for their life, but, mm. you know, you can only run as much as your leg can mm. carry you. But what are we saying? There's negligence on the part of the people and there's corruption in the system because we have so much commissions who are supposed to the road safety commission, yeah. the tanker, that are back everywhere. Even. We have all sorts of things, but... How do trucks that are not roadworthy, as you said, how do they get on the road? Some things have exchanged hand. Sadly. Mm. And we're yeah, losing lives. And the Two days ago, mm. there was one in Lagos. The, this, it didn't catch fire at mile two, I think, yes. Nigerians were rushing to go and, and scoop the fuel. To scoop fuel. Mm. There's a video going around about that. So it's, we need to rework our, our brains, our system, our culture. We need to just think inward. Mm, we need to think inward. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a really sad story. Their properties are uh, worth millions, and of course, lives have been lost, and we hope that uh, we can be better a nation, you know, in terms of all of this. So we'll move quickly now to this day, and it says, again, the, world's mo the world mustn't sleep, walk into another debt crisis. And mm. this is, I believe, still on the IMF thing. It's mm. on the front page, but it's continued on page five. Buhari restricts ministers of foreign trips and delegation size. We are happy about that, yes. And it's on page six. And then James Hope College lands in Lagos. Uh, IMF cautions Nigerians and others against rising debts to China. That story, you can see it's displayed there, but it's continued again on page five also of this day. Now, concerns mount over rising foreign funding for Boko Haram. Obasanjo military chiefs warn of prolonged war against insurgency. Buhari directs service chiefs to promptly settle fallen soldiers' entitlement. Mm. That's on the front page and it's continued on page six. Again, police free 500 males chained in Katsina School. And that's on page five. Um, if you're ahead, you, you want to start from somewhere. Uh, yes, I mean, again, I mean, back to. IMF, but I mm -hmm. think it's an important point to make this time, especially from the perspective of China. Mm -hmm. and the, yeah, that's and the, the different aspect yes, of this. Yes, different angle. I think they all, they all realize there's going to be a story, so they all have sides come at it from different angles. Mm -hmm. China is a story that I think nobody really addresses in detail because it's literally the giants of the world at the moment. True. Right? 216 mm. countries, oh sorry, 126 companies out of Fortune 500 countries are Chinese. Yeah. Three, top three of the biggest banks in the world from an okay. asset-based point of view are Chinese. I mean, the next one is probably a British, and the next one is probably, I think, a French company, a French bank, you know. And um, we, we forget how, we, we have to, it begs the question, how did they actually get there in the mm -hmm. first place? Mm -hmm. Almost you so know? quickly. Very quickly, <laughs> Before you know. Before we realize it, they are taking Yeah, them. so they make a good point in, in, that, in that respect. And I think we spoke about a, a few infrastructure, infra, infrastructure projects that they're working on mm -hmm. in Nigeria. And we just need to make sure that every country is in control of, I think they're talking about it more from the perspective of the, um, the volatility because they're not part of the Paris Club. But at this point, you would see that, it, that they have to be just based on their credentials, mm. part of the big boys club. Yeah, yeah the, the world power. Yeah, the world power club. <laughs> they are the world power. Mm. So excluding them does not make any sense. Mm. You know, and, and but from a, from, a, from a local point of view though, we also have to make sure that we're in control 
of our infrastructure, of our assets, mm -hmm. and that we make, even, even though they are the biggest and they're the biggest uh, power, we also need to make sure that we have the proper vetting process for these projects that go on in Nigeria. So yeah, we yeah. too can benefit and hopefully one day become just as big as China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good dream. <laughs> <No>? <laughs> It's yes, a good dream. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> All right. Now, Buhari Direct Service Chief to promptly settle fallen soldiers' entitlements. What are your thoughts? I really think they should get their mm. uh, what is due them, you know. I, I think we, we talk about every day, oh, we don't do enough yeah. for our country. We don't do enough for our country. We talk about the, we, you know, we talk about from the youth service all the way up to when you're uh, actually in active service mm. in the military. And for the people that actually still, you know, don't think it's a dream, that still think, believe in Nigeria, mm. They should be rewarded yeah. immeasurably. True. You know, they it, are the people we put out there. Yeah, always in the and front we want line. Yes, we want security. And they're not being. Then the people start from their barracks and the places they stay. Yeah, exactly. Mm, their welfare know. is not. It yeah, it should yeah. be taken care of. That's, you know, I hope that uh, attention, they are paying attention to this. In the interest of time, we'll move to the nation newspaper. And Aisha Buhari apologizes over video. That's on page eight. And new aids uh, resume. Uh, President slashes ministers Esther Code. That's on page 40. Travel plans demanded. And that's. Uh, same story that we're talking about. Mother baby died in a nature tanker fire. That sad story again is on page four. 40 buildings and 500 shops raised down. That's sad. And then Bayelsa and Kogi, uh, 2019. Dixon urges INEC to resettle Nembe and Southern Ijo voters. INEC's uh, stakeholders meeting ends abruptly in Bayelsa. Kogi SDP say we are, we are most popular. And then 40, 45 parties back Bello. These are more stories you'll find on page 10 of the nation newspaper. It will be displayed. And Nigeria's tax to GDP ratio, uh, world's lowest, according to IMF. Yeah, it just portrays the point I was trying mm -hmm. to make earlier. Mm -hmm. so. And then DMO reports Nigeria's debt is 25.7 trillion naira. That's on the front page, but it's co co continued on page 7. Now, workers wait in suspense as minimum wage talks drag. Um, tomorrow is the 17th. Uh, today, tonight is the ultimatum. Count on me, uh, count me out. Um, find out who this is and saying oh, that. that they, and I, news about the wedding. Mm, oh, oh, yes. Oh, oh, the wedding. alleged wedding. Let's, <laughs> we're not, we're not. Please, let's, yeah, yeah, we, don't, we want fake to be. News. Yeah. Fake. yeah. Okay, okay. Fake news. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, Nigerian killed in South Africa again. That's mm. on page 40. ICPC. Mm recovers uh, 200 houses. Very quickly, what do you think of Aisha Buhari apologizing for the video that went viral? You know, yesterday we talked about how embarrassing. Well, I think it's welcome to the, na to the nation because he brought, uh, for me, he brought disrepute yeah. to the... I mean, the first family's business shouldn't be... the office of the presidency, to our own office, and the, uh, uh, the first lady, mm -hmm. and to the institution itself. Because that... Uh, Asarok is an institution. It represents Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you can bring it to so low, and then you have such a video making the making rounds, the rounds. Oh. it's not only to the family, to the nation. Mm -hmm. How are we perceived outside Nigeria? Yeah. So well, our, our apology is welcome. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I have. I don't think she has anything to apologize. That's just my personal opinion. This is a lady that was in, in, a, in a very true to herself position. She was making a, what she thought was an honest claim. Mm. You know. So the fact that she was captured in what should have been a private moment yeah, is something I mean, that I mean, she should, they should be apologizing to her. Because at the end of the day, this is what she, this is, this is her own, these are her own private thoughts. She should not have to be censored. When, she did, when she's not expecting to in be... In her private space. In her also. private space, yes. yes. Yeah, so, yeah. yes, she should not have to be censored in her private space. Yeah, but she's apologizing to Nigerians. For the embarrassment. For the embarrassment of how it family came out. brought to the country. Mm. Well, they, the family problem, they will sort that out. Uh, our needs it shouldn't or, be our, our that, that's business. Not, we shouldn't even know in the first business, anyways. I still don't it think it's her in her. Yeah, I, 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 I respectfully disagree because I, you know, you know, but saying. you know, but can I finish what I'm yeah. saying? So I respectfully disagree because I feel that if she was in control of that narrative, if mm -hmm. she's the one that brought out the phone and put the phone out there, yeah. then she has something to complain you know, to apologize I about. You. Yes, yes. Can I finish? Mm -hmm. So, but then at the point where this is her private, these are her private thoughts. And it's, it, it's possible and it's that she has no, and it's a third party involvement. Mm. 
there is nothing to apologize for. Okay. If nothing has that is that was said is incriminating to Nigerians, there's nothing she said okay. that is incriminating to Nigerians. I'm sorry, that okay. is just my personal. That's opinion. your personal. Opinion. Yes, uh, my opinion is this: <laughs> yeah. the lady who shot the video mm -hmm. is a family member. Mm -hmm. We don't know her. She's mm -hmm. nobody to Nigeria. We've not voted for her to go into the state house. So, so the correct thing she had for her to have no, done was to, apolo was to no. apologize on the behalf of That's her what member. She's done. Not, but not for her. You claim, you, you're talking about the institution, yes. about Nigeria. No, I mean, no. the offense. I'm sorry. No, the mm. offense, what mm. I'm saying, they brought the name of that institution. I'm sorry, I don't disagree. Disappear. I respectfully disagree. Yeah, well, but that's, that's my own opinion. <laughs> okay. I respectfully disagree. I'm saying I respectfully our apology, disagree. Our apology <laughs> is for what they've done to Nigerians. What have they done to Nigerians? Okay. They brought us to dispute. It's, uh, the, it's a big we disgrace. We would like to continue someone, this, this for debate. For someone to be videoing, that was breach of security in the first place. Yes. Exactly. So Nigerians... Which is, which is whose fault? That is a family member. Okay, so Jenny, we don't know so Fatima. Wait, <laughs> That's we don't know who have, Fatima so her is. Her family member should okay. go and apologize, not no, her. No, we don't sorry. know who Fatima is. Well, then her, right. we should Thank know her and so then her to apologize. Fatima doesn't have an office. In the interest sorry, of time, hasn't. sorry, guys, in the interest of time, maybe I, we have I can't, to go I can't, to I can't, I can't move, yeah, I can't move my opinion, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you should move your opinion. I'm not, I don't. I understand where you're coming from. I just want you to see the reason where I'm coming from. Thank you so very much, Dr. Edo. Thank you so very much, Ify. It's getting fierce, I mean, we are concerned about about our, our national uh, reputation, maybe. Yeah. Anyways, this is where we're going to call it a wrap. Thank you, Dr. Edo, for being yeah. with me. And then thank you, Ify, of course, yeah. uh, for sharing your thoughts. And this is where we're going to end it today for Off the Press. We'll do this at the same time tomorrow, 8.30, uh, here on this program. I am Amaka Okoye.